Welcome to week six of the NAI Weekly Football Update. I'm your host, Alan Grossbach, alongside Chad Waller, coming to you from the NAI headquarters in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. We are now at the midway point of the year, and many of the conference title races are beginning to heat up. People always say that every week matters in college football. Well, it definitely does now as we are only a little over a month away from the NAI Football Championship Series Selection Day. You're absolutely right, Chad. It's always exciting down the stretch here in NAI football. Let's take a look back at last week's NAI Football Game of the Week, and it was, it was honestly a little more one-sided than, than many would have predicted as number 8 Baker took down number 20 Peru State 35-10. The Wildcats wasted no time lighting the scoreboard, marching 78 yards on 10 plays on the first possession of the game to take a 7-0 lead. Cornell Brown ended the day with a team, or who ended the day with a team high 53 rushing yards, capped the drive with a five-yard scoring run. Peru State responded with a 23-yard Greg Connery field goal, but was held off the scoreboard until late in the fourth quarter. After the field goal, Baker scored 28 unanswered points, including three touchdown passes to three different receivers by quarterback Nick Mara. Now overall, the Wildcats racked up 413 yards of total offense with nearly 300 coming through the air. Mara completed 63% of his throws on the day, but was intercepted once. Defensively, Baker limited Peru State to only 233 yards of total offense, including only nine passing yards. Now for those that have never seen Peru State play, they run a triple option offense, so they don't pass very often. However, to only surrender nine passing yards is a serious accomplishment. The Wildcats also forced four turnovers in the contest, which include three fumbles and one pick. Linebacker Tucker Pauley led the team with 11 tackles, including two for a loss and a forced fumble. Now the win makes Baker 5-1 and one on the year, while the loss drops Peru State to 4-2. and two. Similar to last week, we had movement all over the board in the fourth regular season edition of the NAI Coaches Top 25 poll, which came out earlier this week. Lindsey Wilson locked down the number one ranking for the second consecutive week after a dominant win at Union Kentucky last weekend. The Blue Raiders face a tough test Saturday when they host Cumberland's Kentucky, which was only a few votes out of Crockett cracking the top 25 this week. Other notable movement was St. Francis, Indiana, jumping into the top 10 for the first time since September 22nd of 2014. Now the middle of the poll saw many teams jockey one to two spots. The most notable was previous number six Marion's eight spot fall to number 14. Now the Knights have lost two of their last three to drop down in the poll. Dickinson State is the lone newcomer this week at number 25. The Blue Hawks are 5-1 on the year, which is the program's best start since opening the 2010 season with six straight wins. This is the first time that Dickinson State has been ranked since the 2011 preseason poll. We start our look back at last week with a blowout in the Mid-South Conference as number 14 Reinhardt downed Bluefield 80-14. The Eagles scored 66 unanswered points to improve to 5-0 on the year, and this is one week ahead of a key showdown with number 10, Faulkner. Reinhardt tallied the second most rushing yards in a single game this season with 539 against the Rams. Tailback Nigel Curtis broke the century mark for the second game in a row with 115 yards and three scores. His touchdowns came from four yards, five yards, and three yards out. Overall, the Eagles had seven individuals rush for at least 40 yards. Defensively, Reinhardt forced three turnovers, including a 70-yard interception return for a touchdown by Jalen Holloman, and that came late in the fourth quarter to secure the win. Now we stay in the Mid-South and look at arguably the largest upset from the weekend is unranked Campbellsville down number three Faulkner, 59 to 50. Both programs ran over 90 plays and combined for more than 1,000 yards combined. The Eagles outgained Campbellsville, but the Tigers were able to come up with five turnovers. Tiger quarterback Jacob Russell broke his own single game passing record with six touchdown passes. Russell, who was named National Offensive Player of the Week this week, completed 30 throws for 379 yards in the contest. Wide receiver Jared Harrington caught 12 of those passes for 131 yards to tie the program's single game record for receptions. He ended the day with 375 all-purpose yards, which also broke the school record. The trio of quarterback Clayton Nicholas, running back Joe Jones, and wide receiver Rob Lockhart had strong performances for Faulkner. Nicholas threw for 380 and four scores. Lockhart caught nine passes for 187 yards and three touchdowns. And Jones eclipsed the 100-yard mark for the second time this season and scored twice. With the win, it puts Campbellsville three and two on the year, while Faulkner falls to four and one. And get this: with the win, the Tigers have beaten three top five teams in the last ten games. Wow! The last game we'll look at was a battle out of the Mid States Football Association between number 11 St. Francis, Indiana, and number six Marion. 
the Cougars scored 20 unanswered points in the fourth quarter for the improbable 45-42 win. St. Francis scored on its opening possession of the final frame as P.J. Dean broke through the Knights' defense for a 45-yard touchdown run. The Cougars then capitalized on a Marion fumble with a 23-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Nick Ferrer to Sean Boswell to make it 42-38. Another Marion turnover gave St. Francis the ball with just over two minutes left and a chance to win. The Cougars proceeded to march 50 yards on four plays en route to the victory. Ferrer was key for St. Francis. He threw for 348 yards and three touchdowns. The win puts the Cougars at 5-0 on the year, while Marion drops to 3-2. A couple other notable scores over the weekend were number four Morningside defeating number 15 Northwestern 27-7, and number nine Grandview defeated receiving votes Mid-America Nazarene 36-31. For the second time in the last three weeks, the Great Plains Athletic Conference will be featured in the NAI Football Game of the Week as number 12 Dakota Wesleyan and number 8 Doan were chosen in our social media fan vote. Saturday will be a battle of unbeatens as both clubs enter the contest with 5-0 records. Additionally, this is the second time this season that Doan has been featured in the NAI Game of the Week. The Tigers beat number, then number 10 Northwestern Iowa 28-21 on September 26th. Doan features one of the stingiest defenses in the NAI. The Tigers are second in scoring defense per game, allowing only 10 points per contest. Additionally, they rank fourth in rushing defense and total defense. Defensive back Tanner Thomas is one of the big play guys for Doan. He leads the NAI with five interceptions. Linebacker Garrett Borcher is the team leader in tackles with 39, and that includes 18 solo stops. The offense primarily runs through tailback Nate Meyer, who is second nationally in total rushing with just under 650 yards this season. He has reached the 100-yard plateau three times on the year, including a 233-yard effort against Nebraska Wesleyan last Saturday. Now Dakota Wesleyan's 5-0 start is its best since the 2011 season. The Tigers are led by dual-threat quarterback Dylan Turner. He leads the team in passing with more than 1,100 yards and rushing with more than 450. He has accounted for 17 touchdowns, including 11 passing. Turner enters the weekend ranked six in the, N in the NAI in total offense, averaging nearly 320 yards per contest. Defensively, Dakota Westian ranks fourth in sacks and 15th in rushing defense per game. Defensive end Brady Mutter paces the squad with five sacks, while Adam Borman owns a team best 35 tackles. Now this game is extremely important in the GPAC title race as Doan, Dakota Westian, and Morningside all are unbeaten in league play. The winner of this game gets a definite leg up with a date against the Mustangs still looming for both clubs. You know, Chad, like we mentioned earlier, we picked this game using a social media fan vote. Graphics will be posted on Facebook and Instagram no later than 6 p.m. Central Time on Monday evening, and that poll remains open until 10 a.m. Central on Tuesday. So please, when you see that, get out and participate and vote for your favorite game. Lastly, I'd like to remind you to submit questions for our Periscope Q&A session which we do on Thursdays, and you can submit those through our NAI underscore news account, or you can do that live during the broadcast. Well, that puts a wrap on this week's episode. I'm Alan Grossbach. And I'm Chad Waller. We'll see you next week.